So you found yourself working in Microsoft Azure, and you also need some very performant and capable enterprise storage. Well, I'm here to tell you about Azure NetApp Files. Uh, it is a new service that just became ungated. Uh, you may have heard about it over the last few years as, as we have brought it online. Uh, NetApp and Microsoft have, have brought it online inside of Azure. It's really, really cool. It's a, like having access to very high performance storage inside of your VNets inside of Azure. So let's take Azure constructs and concepts and tie in Azure NetApp files and show you guys where it all ties in. So in the big umbrella that is Azure, uh, across all things, you've got multiple different things you can use. You've got networking to do, you've got regions, you've got availability zones you can uh, uh, determine inside of those regions, and inside of all of those you've got storage accounts and virtual machines and all of this functionality that you can use. Where Azure NetApp Files comes into play, that's what I want to show you guys today. Because before now, you would have Azure Disks or Azure Files or Azure Blob if you were doing object. So let's break this down. In the beginning, there was Azure Disks, Azure Files, and Blob for object, right? Now, over the last few years, we've brought on premium versions of this at Microsoft. So you have Azure Premium SSDs and you have Azure Premium files that get you a little bit more performance and a little bit more uh, resiliency, if you will. Somewhere in the middle right here, though, there was a big gap a few years ago, and it was recognized by Microsoft, and they brought in what was originally called NFS as a service. Now, as we were conceptualizing this with Microsoft, we thought that's not really that good of a name. What if we called it uh, Azure Enterprise Files, right? Because we've already got Azure Files. Well, this is gonna be Enterprise. To designate some of that resiliency and performance that you're used to getting on-prem, bringing that up to the cloud. Well. We built it, and we're gonna go over that in just a second, but the final name that it landed on was not Enterprise, it was Azure NetApp Files. Azure NetApp Files, in a nutshell, is uh, NetApp's A700 All Flash FAS arrays wired directly into uh, regional data centers so that you have your VNets and your workloads have direct access to an A700 All Flash FAS and all of the performance and horsepower that it brings to the table. That's what I wanna go over with you guys today and talk about how you do architecting solutions, uh, much like you will with Azure Files or Azure Disks, but we're gonna do that as, as part of this discussion. So hang tight, let's reset the board. So in Azure, you have what's known as a VNet. In AWS and Google Cloud, those, those are known as VPCs, but they all have their own kind of nuance and they all have their own different ways of working. But think of it as a logical container for a working set of various services and products. Inside of that VNet, you have things called subnets and you can delegate a subnet to uh, any VNet in order for it to take advantage of that IP address range. Right? Azure NetApp Files sits out here as a service to be able to be delegated into a VNet so that the workloads inside of that VNet can take advantage of the underlying storage. That's just how we wire up uh, a storage array to your VNets, if you think about it in that way. We do it through subnet delegation. Now, inside of this service known as Azure NetApp Files, you have multi-region access. So you can have an instance of Azure NetApp Files in each region. We do that by tying it to a storage account, right? A storage account is tied to a specific region. So let's just say in this case, we're gonna be operating in US West 2. It could be any region. There's over 30 regions now that have access to Azure NetApp files around the globe. Check and see if yours is, is available. For this example, we're gonna use US West 2 in Oregon we're gonna be able to set up a storage account. We're gonna be able to tie it to a resource group inside of Azure. If you know your Azure stuff, you know the words that I'm referring to. And inside of that storage account, we're gonna create what's called a capacity pool. Now it's important to understand that you have three different types of capacity pools, and those determine your performance and storage level. So we've got standard, premium, and 
Ultra. Ultra, there we go. Now these are your capacity pools. The way I want you to think of these is like a big bucket. And you're gonna fill this bucket with water. There's nothing in it yet, there's no water in it yet, but you're gonna use these buckets uh, to, to determine how much water you can put in there and how fast you can put the water in there, if you think about it that way. Because outside of a capacity pool, it's simply a logical container. We're gonna begin to create volumes, right? You can have as many of these volumes in there as you want up to a certain illogical threshold that's so high it shouldn't really even be a concern. And you can have as many of these volumes in here as you want, name them whatever you want, and every single one of these volumes inherit the performance level of the capacity pool that they live in. Remember that, that's important when you're doing your architectures. You're not gonna wanna put your most performance stuff in standard, and you're not gonna wanna put your cold data in premium or ultra. So it's kind of an architectural design when it comes down to that point. The beauty of this is that all of these volumes and all of these, the storage account and your subnet is Active Directory aware. So anytime you uh, group all of these together, if you logically want to group these together, all of them can have access lists, right? So we'll do a little right there and you can have AD coming in, Active Directory, as an external part of your VNet or as part of your authentication process, whether it's Azure AD or whether it is roll your own Active Directory as VMs inside of Azure. But you can authenticate your NFS and SMB mount points with Active Directory. It all rolls up, it all, it's all integrates. And the beauty of our service at Azure NetApp Files is that we support multi-protocol. So each volume can support both NFS and SMB. Keep that in mind. NFS and SMB in the same volume, Active Directory integrated to be able to tie it in. All you have to do is add a service account and a container uh, a computer container into your Active Directory. That's what we do when we integrate it there. So it looks like it's just another server maintaining uh, access permissions inside of your Active Directory. But we can serve NFS and SMB, one or the other or both, out of each of these volumes. Now, remember I said that these were different performance levels. We can also have multiple volumes coming out of the premium service level, and we can also have different service levels coming out of, the, or volumes, at the ultra service level. The core difference here is that you've got different throughput boundaries that you're able to set on each of these to, able, to be able to determine how you want to bucketize them into each of their different performance tiers. So to recap, storage account, ooh, I forgot I could move that. Storage account is tied to the Azure NetApp file service. This all gets delegated to your VNet as a subnet so that anything in this VNet, whether it's VMs or other you know, VNet peering or any other things that might be coming into this VNet will be able to access Azure NetApp files and the data that's contained in any of the capacity pools under this storage account will be able to be accessed from that VNet. Under the covers, where all of these volumes live, it's important to understand that this is not software sitting on commodity hardware. This is an A700 all flash FAS. It's actual hardware. You're getting direct access to an A700, which is probably an upgrade over what you have on-prem today. So the performance levels and the hundreds of thousands of IOPS and sub-millisecond latency, you're gonna get simply by turning on a service and getting a dollar per gigabyte, or, per, or it's 15 standard list prices, like 15 cents per gigabyte per month. That's all you have to worry about. All of this is tied into Azure cost uh, management. It's all tied into Azure monitoring. It is a native service delivered and supported by Microsoft themselves. It's not something that NetApp is doing and kind of doing some funky networking to get it inside of your VNets. This is a Microsoft native service. Simply go to the portal in Azure and in the search bar start typing NetApp and you'll see Azure NetApp files and start creating your storage account and capacity pools today. I hope this was helpful in the understanding of how Azure NetApp Files works. We'll be back with some more deeper dive, 201, 301 kind of advanced stuff here very soon. Take care.